Good evening, I am Amadine Obawe. Now, President Muhammad Buhari has ordered that the old 200 Naira notes shall remain legal tender until April 10, 2023. Uh, this is an extension from the earlier dates of February 10, 2023. He says this is to alleviate the sufferings of Nigerians and also to ensure um, easy access to cash. I'm sure you're aware that uh, there's been widespread um, demonstrations and riots across the country and attacks on banks, uh, mostly by youths who feel aggrieved by uh, different uh, uh, problems across the country caused by the policy and some other issues such as fuel scarcity. Tonight we'll be shining a light on the impact this will have on the 2023 general elections, which are just 10 days away. I've been joined now by Duke Alamboye. He is the National Secretary of the Nigerian Youth Organization and also the National Coordinator of the Green Assembly Initiative. He joins me now to shed more light on the matter. Hi, Mr. Duke. Welcome to Top Talk. Thank you very much. All right. uh, should I say Happy New Year? We're meeting for the <laughs> yeah, first time this year. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a while. while. Welcome back, sir. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, let's start with, you know, what's going on in the streets there. Um, the demonstrations we are seeing, uh, the riots, the violent attacks and all of that, what, what do you think is really, you know, causing it uh, in terms of uh, the allegations we are seeing? Recently, the Edo State Governor uh, uh, accused the former governor, I'm uh, talking about Adam Shumale, of being behind it. And some other persons say that these attacks are, uh, what's the word, um, staged uh, to cause a certain reaction. Do you think this is true? Or is this a genuine reaction to the hardship Nigerians might be facing? Well, um, we have to also, also look at it in two ways. It's a two-way a two -way coin a thing. So uh, because uh, we have a um, lot of things going on in our country now, we the, 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 the populace in the country facing lots of hardship in terms of financial hardship, um, fuel scarcity, political permutations, uh, preparing for elections, uh, campaigns, and all of that. A lot of things happening to the citizens of this nation. And at the time, people are getting confused, getting more tensed, and, um, you know, heating up the whole polity. Uh, the, 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 the instance of uh, the um, Edo State government, uh, governor's uh, speech, uh, pointing at f fingers at um, accusation at um, um, uh, Adam Sashomele, uh, could also be true. These are old politicians that um, are struggling with the new trend of politicking. They, they are, for the first time, they are seeing that it is no more business as usual. They are seeing the authenticity of the electoral laws. They are seeing the workability of the, of the, of the, of the electoral laws. So they are trying to fine tune themselves into the reality of what is happening. And so therefore, it is a struggle to pull off from the old system to ensuring where you, the old system where you don't have followership but you win election, the old system where you just need to gather talks and then you get, you pull up uh, ballot boxes and then uh, win your elections, the old system where you just bring lots of money to the polling units, induce people with financial, uh, with monies and then win your the election. These things, the electoral laws have slated it so clearly that it might not be so possible. So you're seeing them still struggling to come up with with a new method of, uh, you know, uh, adapting to what is real now in the politics. The likes of uh, Adams or Shomele, without bringing him down, we know his antecedents, we know what he's capable of doing, and uh, these things are no more working. You can see him come out to a campaign ground, and people are actually, to his face, campaigning that it's not a possible candidate, even going against his national his national uh, 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 presidential candidate. Uh, in the four or two, he was about to make a speech, I think a labor uh, uh, program or so, he wanted to make a speech on behalf of the presidential cap, uh, candidate of the APC, and he was shut down because this is, these are no times that you come to tell people things that are not real. These are no times that you tell people the hardship facing them is not true. These are the times that when you speak reality, if possible, campaign apologetically to the nation so that they can understand that Indeed, we, you've done very badly, but you're thinking that the new government can come and redeem what has been done badly. So I think in one way, if you look at it, what the Edo State Governor is saying is true because he is one person that has always stood firmly to say democracy must stay. And for democracy to stay, we saw the, the level of hum humiliation and intimidation he went through. But because he had the people by his side, the new electoral law favored him. That's why he had the second term uh, into power. So he believes now and understands that 
2023 election is about the people. You will see him so, in so many fora also said to Nigerians and youths of his uh, of his constituency, he states that look, we should not undermine this 2023 election is going to be people oriented. He has run election on this platform, and you understand what it means. So I think if you look at it th those two ways, these are two very strong characters in the state trying to ensure that the real essence of, of democracy and the right to vote properly is carried along in the, in the state and maybe affecting the whole entirety of the country. No, it's, uh, mm. let's, let's take it now to this policy and uh, yeah. the hardship we talked about. Uh, the president seems to have considered halfway, you know, uh, by saying the 200 naira notes will continue, but the rest um, will remain illegal, not legal tender. So the question now is, with the hardship we've seen, we've seen um, different accounts. We've seen some Nigerians go naked in the banks. We've seen some, you know, having to sleep at the ATM overnight. These things are going on. But somehow, there's still this um, um, talk on the grapevine that people still like the policy, even though they are suffering, you know. So let's talk about that, um, you know, that paradox. Well, How can people say yeah. that the policy is um, hurting us, but we want it to continue? First of all, first yeah. of all, let me draw your attention to the fact that even in our homes, for us to get improved on a certain standard, we we'll suffer the, 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 the period of that, the process of that improvement. Mm. For instance, we have a two-bedroom flat, and we need to move into a three-bedroom flat or pull, the, pull off the two-bedroom flat home and build a more accommodating home for ourselves. We go through those difficult times where we have to constrain ourselves, sleep in a particular part of the house, or move out of the house, get ourselves accommodated. So many inconveniences that comes with new development and new innovations. This is what we are going through. Nobody in this country, every sensible person, will not come up to say that this policy is not favorable to our nation. Nationally, looking at this policy is fantastic, is generally accepted. Um, but the, there is an aspect that is so painful. The persons, the Buddhists, the, the elites of our nation that have ordered this currency in their personal homes are the people causing this problem to the efficiency and effectiveness of this new policy of rebranding the money so that we can have a brand new floating economy. They have ordered these funds in their personal homes so that bringing it out is becoming a problem in millions, in trillions, some of them. So bringing it out is becoming a very big issue as they know that the law will pursue them to that regard. So the, the, the if it, it, it is seamless, if it's, the, if it's in a nation where uh, the monies were quite in circulation and then it's just to give it back to the bank, the bank gives you back a new note. It's as simple as and seamless as ABC. But we see that there's also a checkmate on this policy. The checkmate is what amount of money are you bringing? Where are you bringing it from? You cannot take three trillion. You cannot take two trillion, one trillion, five hundred billion to the bank today that you want to exchange or you want to bank from your home. There will be, there will be questions questions to it. The EFCC will rise against you. ICPC will rise against you to know where these funds are coming from. This is what they are running away from. Unfortunately, they are going to lose because I appreciate the government of the day for them to have stood firm. Today, I was proud of the president. He, was, he stood firm on those. Most of these currencies that are missing in circulation mm. had the 1,000 Naira notes and 500, 500 Naira notes that have been hoarded. So, to ease the tension for the innocent Nigerians that are suffering, receiving the, their monies, they've allowed the 200 Naira notes to float. Let me tell you something. It will not also go well. Until it will continue because until I one place I expected the president to have also put up some leverage is let the two hundred naira note continue until they have received good chunk of money. I think he said about two point seven trillion is still hanging out of circulation. Mm -hmm. Believe me, those monies will not come. Majority of those monies will not come because they are not in the hands of the poor Nigerian. They are in the hands of these politicians and rich men that have ordered money outside the bank uh, premises. So it will not be too easy. For them to bring out those money because they are not even in two, 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 200 naira uh, uh, denomination. So, how are they going to take those monies to the bank? It's a million dollar question. However, I know that the suffering and yearning of Nigerians getting currencies to transact their business will soon end because, at the expiration of the date, that is why I'm also happy that they did extend the date, those monies will now become counterfeit. They will not be productive, they will not be useful in their hands, so that they will now also know that it's time now to bring more money into circulation. The problem is scarcity of, of fund. And why CBN is a little bit holding on 
bringing more money to circulation is because, is because if they do that, it will be it will amount to inflation. Mm. You and I agree that it will amount to inflation. So they were just tactically waiting if those monies will return a little while into the system. They can now uh, 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 issue out an equivalent of such money that have come so that they also check the economy, checkmate the economy rather that we don't run into inflation because of this policy. So my my take in this that the government have improved far better for us so that the banks can now begin to um, uh, give two two hundred and notes. You can imagine yesterday I was in the bank oh. and the people were giving two thousand and that is because of the denomination issue. Now that they've released they've said the two two hundred and notes will continue people can have money enough money to to take from bank and give to the bank. However I'm still looking at a pointer where those monies in the hands of the Buddha, the central bank should know from today that those 1,000 notes are not in the, in, not with me, not to the likes of you. Mm. It is in the hands of a cadre, a, a particular level of people in the country. And for the fact that they are going to be pursued on how they got those money and why it is ordered, they will not bring it out. Those monies will go. So I'm also appealing to CBN that in no time, they should count those monies at uh, monies that are gone in, into the system and try to see how they can help the system to float again, pumping more money to the economy. So that, uh, um, commercial activities are suffering, mm. commuters, um, the transportation is high, and it's, it's a very fantastic uh, policy where we have um, uh, what they call it um, less money in circulation, but you know, an automated. Uh, this is. So I think it's going to be very, very fantastic as a policy on the on the on on, on its effects on the on the election. Yes. I, I don't I relate them. To that, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't relate them in at, at all because the election we are going in. I don't see what the use of money is. Like the last time I was in the studio, I talked about the INEC when INEC raised an alarm that it was going to affect them. I was wondering because if, for you to have registered with INEC, you would have con your CCC is certified. It means that you have an account system, and then it's just very easy for the banks. To, to go through those accounts and e payments, and then they are all done. Mm -hmm. Little uh, fuel money is to be paid to the day. Everything can go through e payments. So I, I definitely and con uh, condemned that uh, insinuation that is going to affect it. They all know. See, it's high time we left our country to, to grow. They go abroad, they see how this system works, they see everything that goes up on our side. And when they come to our country, they want to still make it look like it's an archaic thing, like, like it's not possible. It's very possible. Anybody that is not ordering money in this country will appreciate this policy. We want an improved economy. We we'll cry about the economy. So we want an improved economy. And one of the ways to improve the economy is to make sure that there is enough flow of cash in the system for people to transact business. You can imagine about 2.7 trillion as of today is in circulation and no, it's not in circulation rather. It's ordered somewhere that nobody knows. So it's quite very dangerous for the economy. It has nothing to this policy has nothing to negatively, nothing to do with the election that is coming. Rather, it has positively because the level of financial inducement will reduce very well. People will come out and vote and vote their conscience. You can't promise them this. And you cannot also pay people the money you don't have. If you want to induce anybody financially and you begin to spread those kind of money in the country, the banks will know. CBN will know. So do you, do you think they don't have access to these new notes? A positions who have um I mean, we don't have we don't have we don't have as much as as much as such money out this new money out for them to use for the general election but, but, to, but there is a, but there's to, a, there's a, there's a new dimension about, for to buy about 60 million or so uh, uh, electorates that's going mm. to vote in this election and even if it is one one thousand that's i mean that's about six trillion yeah but but the, quote, the issue now is so yeah, i don't think i don't think i don't mm. think cbn has printed the new currency i don't think cbn has printed up to a trillion a trillion naira in circulation i, I know but the yeah. issue now is it seems as though you know you know there's this joke that's been running about since this whole um, issue that uh, one thousand naira in the hand is worth more than ten thousand naira in the bank you know because of you know the fact that cash is now rare uh, so do you, do you think there's a dimension where people who wouldn't even accept 10,000 naira for their votes will now accept 2,000 naira because they have no cash. The same thing we are saying. Mm. Now, the, 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 the new notes in circulation is not for an individual. Mm. It's for the country. So that's why you're seeing it even scarce in banks. That's why you are giving 2,000 naira. So you that ordinarily you are even having 2,000 naira. Who, do you think that it's possible that the bank will give the whole of the new notes available in their in their in their in their coffers to a politician it's not done and don't forget that 
is, CBN is also monitoring how money flows in the banks presently. So that's why you're seeing that they are giving those money little little to people to, to do because they don't want to hear that you have given somebody even about 20,000 one person do you understand so it's not going to be easy and it's, it's a good effect on, on the, at the part of the election right. it's going to help the election run smoothly and people are going to vote from their perception and conviction right. that, that, that's what I was just about yeah. to get into um, how do you think people are actually looking at, at this close to the election now, there are some persons within the ruling party who feel as though the closeness to the election is going to make people, um, you know, vote against the ruling party. Now, um, but from your explanation, it seems as though it's a, a people-friendly or a, people, a popular policy amongst the people. Mm. So the question now is, if it is a popular policy amongst the people and it is brought by the current government, yeah. why, does the, uh, why do some or those running for election Next under time. that party feel as though uh, others are going to, you know, blame them for their sufferings yes. and vote them out. I agree with you. You see, you see that's why, uh, sorry to, so, to say this, that's why I always refer to the APC or the ruling party as an unstable party. This is the first time politically I've even seen a, a party with party members with hunting party members, party policies with hunting party members. You see, it's a very fine policy also a little bit untimely. Now, that is at the side of the, the, the ruling class, the ruling party. In the eyes of the opposition, it's fine because we also know that vast majority of these monies we are talking about is domiciled within a, within a given, within given people, a given set of people. And the, all of them, they are also running election. If you come out to cry as someone running election that it, 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 it will truncate the election, it will have negative effect on the election. The question people would like to hear again, why? Because I, I've just, I, I obviously, you're not running an election with money. You're running an election people to convince people to go and vote for you. Mm -hmm. So there will be lots of questions to, to that effect. So you see, they are complaining because they are the people having the fund, funds with them. And it's unfortunate that the way the policy had gone, it will affect their level of withdrawal or the level of plans they have to induce. The government have not done very well. So the only way they can they can win also is also to induce the people that are poor that are going to vote to induce money on them and ensure that they get their vote. So this policy, Mohammed, uh, the president having said that he wants to have a clean electoral process, had also known that what what is what basically my our election is financial, apart from violence, financial inducement. So the laws already are controlled, have controls the new electoral laws already have con some level of controls on violence. So the other way politicians will smartly go about winning election is financial inducement. And this policy is very timely. That's why I said it's very timely to election. However, painful to those persons that have planned to do the smooth, fair, free election process we're going to have, it's painful to them because their plan is being truncated by this policy. That's why you see they are fighting the policy. If not, it's a quite... Governors do not have anything to do with this policy. It does not affect them. If they are sincere to themselves, the, gov the money of, uh, the, uh, of a particular, the monies of a particular state, and the answer of the CBN, they will definitely get new currencies. Transaction levels are, are streamlined and limited and all of that. So it is a clear policy that is brought up to checkmate economic activities in the country. However, also timely, to some persons, untimely to some persons, depend on the fate of what you want to do. People that have that are running election that do not have money, but have the people that will vote for them, today are happy. Because they will not tell people that, okay, even if you were not going to vote me because party A was going to give you money, the money is not even available, so that will not happen. So why not vote for me? And people will now begin to sit down back, reactivate their mental and thought process to say, okay, well, it's high time we put people that are important to important positions so right. that's exactly what is happening all right what, what do you make of this accusation that opposition parties are not considering um the, the average nigerian and that they're just looking at their chances of winning um that the support that the policy is getting from most of the other parties if not all of them other than the some person in the ruling party is just as a result of people looking at you know what this is going to help us possibly win the election and that is a sign that even the opposition parties don't care about the average person. Because um, truly, even though 
there are benefits to this. Uh, there's still a lot of people suffering, there are a lot of people crying. You know, I had a call the other day from someone saying that they, they've sold about 3,000 Naira in a couple of weeks, two weeks, that people don't buy things anymore. And um, so, you know, the regular person out there is still having this issue. There's a Vox Pop the other day that went viral, and a young, uh, not a young woman, pardon me, um, a middle-aged woman says they should bring the money before she votes. Even in Lido State, while they are demonstrating, they are saying no cash, no votes. You understand? So, mm. uh, this pain, uh, people are saying that, why, are they, why is the opposition party not, uh, why are they not, you know, clamoring for, shouldn't they be those ones saying the policy is, is not people friendly because people are suffering? The policy is people friendly. The policy is economic friendly. Why the policy is punishing people now is because the elites that have the monies, the monies they ask you and I to return. Presently, I don't have any money with me. All my monies are in the bank. You don't have. Those people crying. Their monies are in the bank. Why they are not having enough they ought to withdraw is because the policy had also said old currencies should be retrieved. And these currencies are not coming. So I think politicians should cry to their, their colleagues. They know where these monies are. In fact, if it would be very possible for even uh, uh, CBN to, they have done, CBN had even helped us a, a, a while. They have said that such amount of money is not in, in circulation. So with the advocacy should be, who are these persons holding this money? Unfortunately, they are not in the bank. The money you are talking about, 2.7 trillion, is not in bank. It's neither even in circulation. It's kept in the hands of people. Is it you? Is it the, that woman that was shouting? In the television that owns the outstretched amount of money the answer is no so the people we are supposed to cry out to are the politicians these persons that have hoarded these monies in their in, the, in their in their holes with billion vans and we know all of this so this, those people should go and bring out the money and take it to the bank so that they can help the people if we know them tactically we shouldn't vote for them because they are the people causing this problem in the country they should not be voted for of course, in the side of opposition, it's a good, it's a good one to lash on. Of course, if the, if the opposition has, uh, they are there, they are seeing what is happening, they know where these monies are, some are with them, majority are with the, 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 the ruling party. Of course, it's a good instrument to campaign. It's not that they don't care about the people. They are saying, yes, if this thing was not here, they were disadvantaged because these people would have infused lots of money in circulation. So it's a two-way thing. There isn't one to balance one. That's why I also like the fact that the political parties gathered themselves and supported the, the CBN. While you will see that the people that are ready to unleash the system, that are ready to use money for the elections, are against the policy. So it's, it's, it's two ways. However, whatever way you look at it, it is just the poor masses that have small, small, bigger amount of money in circulation for transaction immediate and uh, financial uh, uh, commercial transaction that are not able to get it because CBN had also said that except these monies are returned in their numbers, we cannot pump in more money. The effect of it is that if they do that, it will cause inflation and oh, yes. the, the cost of things will rise, monies, more money will be chasing fewer goods and all of that. You know the implications, the trending implications of those things, mm. which we have to start preaching to people. I'm sure when a new government comes in, they will review these policies. One fact that I know the CBN is also trying to do mm. as much as the security agencies and more the presidency is to block because you don't, we don't have any reason why 2.7 trillion of Nigeria's money will be stuck away from circulation. Okay, if not for political yeah, okay, uh, that, That's fair enough. But so, what about so, the legal so, so, aspect to this? The, the legal aspect to this. The Supreme Court says the status quo remains. Everything should be legal. Okay. Let, 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 let me ask you something. Doesn't that say the bad The precedence? Supreme Court is federal government. Yes. So federal government cannot judge a matter on its own. I'm not, I'm mm -hmm. not, uh, I'm not actually seeing... I'm not actually seeing the Supreme Court judgments. No, because in, in fact, President Buhari's um, speech, he says that he's aware that there are pronouncements on the matter. Mm. But then his own pronouncement is, 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 it varies. It's supreme. The one on it varies. That's what I'm saying. Because legally, I'm not a lawyer, but I think legally, you cannot uh, adjudicate on your own matter. That's sit down and say you're the judge on your matter. The Supreme Court is federal government. 
Well, so the not, federal not government policy, but they do have jurisdiction yes, on matters yes, yes. between so, federal and states. So, 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 I, I think instead of the Supreme Court to come out openly to oppose its policy, because because this comes out, the CBI also have the legal, 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 legal uh, 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 division that would have studied the legality of what the CBI wants to do. Right, so, so, which is attached, okay. attached to federal federal government. So, mm. the Supreme Court is federal. The Supreme Court would have only advised the presidency or federal government on this matter, not the oh. pronouncement. Oh, well, okay. Well, so well, that pronouncement, well, I think, is not holding. That's what you're saying. Uh, the let, president let, is not even yeah. respecting it. So well, I'm not a lawyer to clearly yeah. say that, but okay. I think on a common sense uh, uh, angle, I don't think uh, it's, it's holding water. Uh, uh, let's move uh, move now to. Um, turnout. It is even turn the integrity of the. It is very, even affected the integrity of, of the Supreme Court. That is the well, truth. Well, that, that remains to be seen. We'll, yeah. we'll deal with that some, some other time. So now, the, how do you think this will affect turnout? You know, do you think it will have any effect at all? I'm talking about um, because um, we talk a lot about um, the Naira swap, but there is still the issue of um, false scarcity in um, states under than Okay, not um, the federal capital territory. Outside of the federal capital territory. Most people buy fuel for outrageous prices. Yeah. You know? So it's only within here that, um, within the capital here, that we see that things are kind of steady. So all these things involved. Do you think it will have any effect on how people turn out that day? There's there's very there's very high level of determination. Mm. Nigerians want good governance. Nigerians want an effective and visible change, not that change that they preach that is prosperous that change that looks like a mirage nigerians have tasted every level of pains nigeria has tasted every level of enjoyment and i tell you we've not really gotten the gains and true benefits of democracy 2023 elections nigerians are key factors to producing good candidates at all strata basically and most importantly of it is the presidency so i'm going to sit down here and tell you that whatever way they're going to frustrate whether with fuel whether with uh, naira swap whatever way you want to call it the determination level is high that people will trek to ensure that they go and vote and this is the message i really want to pass nobody that is determined for good governance nobody that is determined that nigeria should have a better leadership nobody should be deterred by these factors that are trying to s put limitations to our ability to go in into these 2023 elections everybody has should still be on deck like me tuesday or wednesday if it will take me to trek i would have taken down to Court, get myself prepared to vote so this is the spirit we have and that's why you see people are reacting to it furthermore before now or i've been issue People who don't have con don't have that uh, uh, concern for what is happening. It's an election. They will just sit down. They, they, the uh, politicians will fight themselves, and at the end of the day, they will bring out somebody to rule the country. But you are seeing that everybody is engaged now. So I think, yes, tactically it might affect the outcome because uh, people were talking about no money, no fuel, and all of that. But it's not an excuse. Activities are still going on. People are still uh, going uh, going by the day to have their deliberate and all of that so it should be a huge sacrifice for the nation to have a new slate for the nation to have a new economy for the nation to have a new governance for the nation to experience new democracy if we look at what is happening today and leave it the the the, the politicians so-called politicians will still go in sponsor whoever they want to sponsor to vote and still emerge at different level i will still know the software survey so i think it will in some quarters affect the turnout of the electorates but it's not going to be as uh, significant or as old as we we anticipate people will still move in their numbers to go and ensure that their their vote come next saturday i mean this is coming saturday yeah. next saturday yeah all right so in just about um a, a minute I, i'd like you now to just um your what um the qualities that nigerians should look out for in, in that leader that should possibly you know save them or lay the groundwork for you know progress they are very the simple yeah. everybody in this country knows a leader that is first of all ready to unify the country so much uh, 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 division in the country a leader will, that will come and speak nigeria okay. not yoruba not south not eastern and not western that is number one number two a leader that have the experience a leader that have been there that knows what 
true governance is that knows the intricacies, the oaths to punch out. That's what we need. That have a repentant heart to say that look, our nation had gone down the drain. We have to pull our nation back. A leader that is focused, that understands that the future is in the hands of the youth, not just saying it. A leader that will come in and fix ministers. We want to see ministers within the age of 40, 30, 50. People that can propel the nation, drive it to a sustainable democracy, a sustainable economy, a sustainable social, social political uh, 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 um, uh, country that can thrive and stand the test of time. We are very, very, very below average. So we need a leader that will bring up these indices, that understand this is that understand that insecurity is a canker worm right. to economic growth. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Dukalambo, for coming. It's a pleasure. Talk. It's Thank nice you very much. You. It's a pleasure. Thank you.